welcome back to the Browse Bunch or welcome if you're new here. I'm Courtney, I'm the stay at home mom to two boys. And in this video, I'm sharing a what's for dinner video as you probably already saw from the title. I share these every single Friday here on my channel to hopefully give you guys some meal inspiration. But ultimately, I'm just sharing what I've made throughout the week for my family. This video is extra special because it's also in collaboration with two other ladies here on YouTube. It's Casey from Life with Casey and Melinda from The Kitchen Diva. I definitely think you guys should go check out their channels and their What's For Dinner videos when you're done watching mine. Casey just got done doing a video every single day in August. So if you like to binge watch some um, videos, then she's got plenty for you and lots of content over there. And then Melinda is super sweet and she recently started her channel not too long ago, but I've been loving it. She's just awesome to watch and she makes some really yummy meals. So make sure to go check out both of them. I think you will love them. And I'll have both of their links in the description box below for you guys. And if you're coming over from one of their channels, again, I'm Courtney. And over here on my channel, I do weekly grocery hauls and then these what's for dinner videos on Fridays. And then I like to throw in some other related videos as well, food related. And I've done some thrift store hauls and that sort of thing. So if any of that sounds good to you, then I would love to have you subscribe. But let's get on into the meals. Tonight, I'm gonna to be making some egg salad and then some fried taters. Um, for the egg salad, I've got 10 eggs in an ice bath right now. They've already been boiling on the stove. And then I've got a little bit of red onion, paprika, dill weed, garlic powder, some apple cider vinegar, mayo, salt and pepper, and mustard. I'm not exactly sure yet how much of each ingredient I'm gonna use, but we'll get into that in just a second. I'm sure everybody makes egg salad differently. This is just what I'm gonna use. I would love to know how you guys make it though. And then I'll also be frying up some taters on the stove which I'm really excited about. I haven't made those in years. My dad used to make them for us when we were kids and they were just so good with some ketchup on them. Just simple, cheap, easy to make, but super yummy. So I'm excited to have those. For the fried taters, while the um, eggs are in the ice bath, I'm gonna go ahead and cut up some thinly sliced ones and then we'll get them started on the stove. Also got three fourths a stick of butter just about melting on the stove and hopefully it's enough I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough or not but to soften up the potatoes I've got them sliced up and then I'll just stick them in the pan with the melted butter put the lid on and wait for them to get soft now I'm just gonna peel all the eggs then chop them up and put them in a mixing bowl before adding in all the other ingredients and y'all I suck at peeling eggs there's no way to even hide the fact that I suck at it. I just, I'm not good at it. I got my potatoes cooking in here with the butter and the lid on. I got to talking with my brother on the phone and just kind of did all this without filming. So, oops. But then I got the eggs peeled and then I'm gonna take the yolks out and mix it up with all of the ingredients before cutting up the whites. That way it mixes in better that way. And I'll add the whites last after mixing in the ingredients and just kind of like fold them in. And you don't have to be gentle with them because clearly I am not, but it's nothing delicate since you're going to be cutting them all up anyway, right? I can't wait to have this tomorrow for lunch when it has been chilled for a while. It's still gonna be good tonight, but it's extra good after it's been in the fridge for a while. I'm gonna do probably about a fourth a cup of mayo, maybe just a little bit more. I'm gonna do like a little bit less than a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar. Oh, maybe not. A tablespoon of mustard. teaspoon of garlic powder, about half a teaspoon of dill weed, a little bit of salt, pepper, paprika, and then probably like half the amount of this cup of red onion. it all up and then we will add in the chopped egg whites. Oh, 
the potatoes are good and soft now, so I'm gonna take off the lid and then we just wait and fry them up, stir them up, fry them up, all that. And then at the end, I'll add some salt, pepper, and garlic powder to them. I think the fried taters turned out to my like perfect liking. I like them a little bit crispy and darker. And then the egg salad, I tried the mixture and it is so good. I'm excited to eat supper tonight. And this is what we're having. Tonight we're gonna be doing some cheeseburger tater tot cups. And so I've got my muffin tin over here and we'll grease that in just a minute. Somehow we ended up with two things of tater tots half empty. So I'm gonna use how many ever it takes. I don't know how much it'll take yet. And then I've got half of a finely chopped up onion, a pound of ground beef. We'll probably use two tablespoons-ish of the ketchup, mustard, and mayo. Then instead of using like shredded cheese, I thought it would be fun to try out this Velveeta cheese sauce and pour some of that on top, but you could definitely still use shredded cheese instead. And then we've got some bread and butter pickles to do on top. Um, if you like dill pickles, use that. If you don't like pickles at all, don't worry about it. And then we've also got the secret sauce to top it with after they come out of the oven. First thing we're gonna do, I've got the oven preheating to 425. We're gonna spray the pan and then put like three tater tots in each cup before making the ground beef because the tater tots are gonna cook for about 10 minutes before you add in like the ground beef and stuff so that they cook a little bit before you add the stuff in. I went ahead and drained the ground beef and then I already measured up the two tablespoons of the mayo, ketchup, and mustard. Just gonna mix that all in. Then I'm gonna smash these up to form around the sides, put some ground beef mixture in it, and then top it with some of that cheese sauce. I am so making a mess. It's been a while since you guys saw a good mess. I used to tell you all the time that I make huge messes every time I cook and that is still true. So I only did three tater tots in each cup but I'm thinking four would have done better than three because they're kind of not squishing as good as I would like. Here's what they ended up looking like after smashing them and if I ever make these again I will definitely do four you could also use crescent rolls and I'm sure that would be fine. I just thought tater tots would be yummy. So this is what I did. Now I'm taking a tea sauce packet and just gonna pour a little bit on each one of them, then put them in the oven for about 15 minutes. I think it turned out to be a fail. They did not stay together. And I took them out a little, a few minutes early because they were just looking really done. But I'm sure they're still gonna be good. This is not as much tater tot to meat mixture ratio. Um, next time, I know I said four, but even five or six tater tots would probably be good. So if you make these, or you could do it in a mini muffin pan with probably three. But if you make these, then definitely do more tater tots than I did, and hopefully yours will stay together better. I'm sure the flavor is still good. We got that secret sauce on it with some pickles and some green beans on the side, and that's what's for supper tonight. Tonight we're making some fried chicken and then potato casserole, our family's absolute favorite casserole, and I was gonna share this one last week, like I said, and forgot the cream of onion. And I told y'all that I would leave it in the description box below, which I ended up doing, but I did not realize how long ago it's been since I've actually made this. So we're having it this week. I got the cream of onion, we're ready to go. 
to do a nine by 13 pan of the potato casserole, we've got 30 ounces of the shredded hash brown potatoes. We'll do eight ounces of sour cream, um, one cup of shredded cheddar cheese, a can of cream of onion soup, a teaspoon of pepper, and about two teaspoons of salt. I've got the oven preheated to 375, and I'm gonna mix the sour cream, cream of onion, and salt and pepper together first before adding in the cheese and then the potatoes. Got the cup of sour cream, can of cream of onion, teaspoon of pepper, or a little bit less. I kind of feel like a teaspoon's a little bit much. I just do what I think looks about right. So maybe like half a teaspoon of pepper. Teaspoon and about that much more. Mix that up and then add the cheese. Then gradually add the hash brown potatoes and you do want these to be almost thawed out. This was everybody's favorite meal that my grandma and my aunt would take places. It's just so good and easy to make. But I do have to say, I've never tried a potato casserole that I didn't like. So there's that. <laughs> now I'm gonna pour it into a nine by 13 sprayed pan and then stick it in a 375 degree oven for about 45 minutes to an hour. Just, you gotta, gotta watch it. And when it starts to smell it, or looks like it's getting some color on top, then it is good to go. Now for the chicken, I've got 1.25 pounds of chicken, and then we've got the canola oil to fry it in, obviously, and then some cornstarch, flour, salt and pepper, paprika, and baking powder. And I'll get into the exact measurements in just a second. For the batter, we've got half a cup of flour, half a cup of cornstarch, two teaspoons of pepper, teaspoon of paprika and then like one and a half teaspoons of salt and the last thing we're going to pour in is about three-fourths a cup of water and then whisk it together so you want this batter to be about the consistency of pancake batter and ours is not so I'm going to add in some more um, flour and maybe a little bit of cornstarch and we forgot baking powder, so we're gonna add in one teaspoon of that. While we get the oil heating up on the stove and I'm gonna cut up some of the chicken into strips, I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator to let it thicken up and chill for a little bit. I cut our chicken into little pieces because I think that we'll like it that way better and the kids will be more apt to eat it that way. But the recipe we're following actually calls for bone-in chicken, like chicken legs and that sort of thing. So I will leave the um, recipe that we're following in the description box below for you guys if you wanna check that out. We're just kinda roughly following it and we ended up cutting the recipe in half and everything like that. So this is what we've got to work with. Travis is patting the chicken dry, then we're gonna dip it in this mixture and fry it up. Here you have it. I've got three pieces of the chicken with some honey mustard to dip it in and then a very generous size helping of the potato casserole because it's just amazing and this is what's for supper tonight. Tonight we're over at my brother's house because our air conditioner is broke and I'm making some jalapeno popper roll-ups and then some Frito corn salad and we'll get to that in a second. But first for the jalapeno roll-ups, I've got some of this ready cooked bacon just to make it quicker. Then four jalapenos. This is not for that. Just kidding. That's for the Frito um, salad. And then I've got a block of cream cheese. We'll only use about half that because I'm going to cut it in strips. And then a can of crescent dough rolls. So I've got the oven preheating to 375. I'm going to cook my bacon, 
cut up the jalapenos and de-seed them, cut them into strips, and then cut up some um, of the cream cheese in strips too. I'm gonna stick this in the fridge until I'm ready for it or else they won't roll up as well. cutting the cream cheese into eight little pieces. So I've got the bacon ready. I'm just gonna break these in half for each one of the roll-ups and then put a few pieces of the sliced jalapeno and a little bit of that cream cheese inside of the crescent dough rolls and cook them for like 15 minutes, I believe. Nine to 15 minutes, depending on when they look done. doing three slices in each one. Now for the Frito corn pie. I've got the whole bag of chili cheese Fritos, two cups of Fiesta blend cheese, two cans of corn, a cup of mayo, fourth a teaspoon of black pepper, and then a chopped up red pepper. And if you want, you can do cilantro in it as well, but Travis doesn't like cilantro, so I'm not doing that. And then we're just gonna mix all the ingredients except the Fritos in, and you just want to mix the Fritos in right before you're gonna serve it so that they don't get soggy. They are. The only qualm I have about these is that I don't think the jalapenos are going to be that soft, so they're still kind of crunchy, but I think they're still going to taste good. And then I've got the Frito corn salad, and we're probably going to use some of the leftover potato casserole from last night too, but this is what's for supper tonight. So that was all four of the meals and all of the recipes that I'm sharing in this video. Hope that it gave you guys some new meal inspiration. And if I used any of these recipes from somewhere else, then I will leave the links in the description box as usual for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If it looks like I'm melting, it's because I am. Our house is 83 degrees inside right now. And I'm actually fixing to go to my brother's house to cook the last recipe that you already just got done watching because it's just too hot in here. Our heat pump officially just went to put like a week or so ago we did like a temporary fix and we were hoping it would hold us off a little longer but it didn't so looks like unfortunately we are going to have to get a new unit so that stinks but i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up it really helps out my channel and don't forget to go watch casey and melinda's videos bye y'all